Today, I will tell you how things could have looked from the first-person perspective of Brian Schaffer and Kyron Horman. I wish you a pleasant listening. My name is Brian, and that night was supposed to be one for the books, a night of jubilation and revelry with my closest friends. We were celebrating the end of finals, eagerly embracing the onset of spring break. The anticipation buzzed in the air as we stepped into the lively atmosphere of the bar, the vibrant music echoing in my ears as we laughed and danced with abandon. As always, I found myself at the heart of the merriment, regaling my friends with jokes and antics, basking in the camaraderie that enveloped us. I was the life of the party, relishing in the company of those I held dear. But then, in the blink of an eye, it all shifted. Suddenly, I found myself alone amidst the crowd, the laughter fading into an eerie silence. Confusion washed over me as I scanned the room, searching for the familiar faces of my friends. Had they slipped away while I wasn't looking? Or had I somehow become separated from them in the chaos of the night? Initially, I brushed off the unease that gnawed at me, convincing myself that they must have stepped away for a moment perhaps to grab another round of drinks or take a breather outside. But as time stretched on and the minutes turned into hours, the knot of worry in my stomach tightened. I embarked on a frantic search, weaving through the throngs of people, calling out their names in a desperate attempt to locate them. But my efforts proved futile. There was no trace of my friends, no sign of where they might have gone. Panic began to rise within me as I realized the gravity of the situation. I reached for my phone, hoping to find a message or missed call that would offer some explanation, but it remained ominously silent, the screen devoid of any notifications. It was as if they had vanished into thin air, leaving behind nothing but an unsettling void. As the night wore on and the bar began to empty out, I was left grappling with the chilling realization that my friends were missing and I had no idea where to find them or what could have befallen them. I stumbled out into the deserted streets, scouring every alley and corner in a desperate bid to uncover any clue to their whereabouts. In the days that followed, I was consumed by a relentless sense of dread, haunted by the unanswered questions that lingered in the wake of their disappearance. I plastered missing posters all over town, pleading with anyone who might have seen them that night to come forward with information. But despite my best efforts, my friends remained elusive, leaving me with nothing but a deepening sense of unease and a longing for closure. To this day, the mystery of that fateful night continues to haunt me, the truth obscured by a shroud of uncertainty. Did my friends leave of their own accord, or was there something more sinister at play? The questions gnaw at my soul, a constant reminder of the night I was left alone, grappling with the inexplicable vanishing of those I held dear. Missing Person Brian Randall Schaefer Missing April 1st, 2006, Columbus, Ohio Name Brian Randall Schaefer Race White Sex Male. Age, 27. Time of incident. Height, 6 feet 2 inches slash 74 inch. Weight, 160 to 165. Hair, brown. Eyes, hazel. Scars slash marks slash tattoos has a pearl jam tattoo on his upper right arm and a dot on his left eye iris. Interest, plays guitar slash medical student. On April 1st, 2006, Brian Randall Schaefer disappeared without an apparent reason. The last known contact was at 1.55 a.m. when Schaefer was having drinks with friends at a local Ohio State University, OSU, bar in Columbus, Ohio. My name is Kyron. I woke up with the first trace of dawn peeking through the curtains painting the room in hues of soft orange and pink. It was one of those mornings where the world seemed to hold its breath, brimming with the promise of endless possibilities. As I stretched into yawned, I could feel a sense of excitement bubbling up inside me. 
like a fizzy soda about to burst out of its bottle, mom was already up, her cheerful humming echoing through the house as she bustled around the kitchen, preparing breakfast, the scent of pancakes sizzling on the griddle and freshly brewed coffee filled the air, wrapping me in a warm embrace that made me feel safe and content. After devouring my breakfast with gusto, mom helped me get dressed for school, I carefully selected my outfit, choosing my favorite Spider-Man shirt and the one with the bold red and blue colors that made me feel like a superhero ready to take on the world. With my backpack slung over my shoulder and my project safely tucked away inside, I was ready to tackle whatever the day had in store for me. The car ride to school was filled with chatter and laughter as mom asked about my plans for the day. I couldn't wait to show off the project I had been working on for weeks to see the looks of awe and admiration on my friends faces when they saw what I had accomplished. As we pulled up to the school, my heart fluttered with excitement, I could see my friends gathered outside, their animated voices mingling with the crisp morning air, with a skip in my step, I bounding out of the car and join them, the anticipation of the day ahead coursing through my veins like electricity. We made our way inside. The familiar halls buzzing with the energy of eager students and bustling teachers. But as I stepped through the doors of the school, something strange happened. It was as if a thick fog descended over my mind, clouding my thoughts and blurring my surroundings. Suddenly, I found myself in a place I didn't recognize a dark and eerie labyrinth of corridors that stretched out before me like a twisted maze. Panic bubbled up inside me like a raging inferno threatening to consume me whole. I called out for my friends, for anyone who could help me, but my voice seemed to vanish into the emptiness of the space around me. I was alone, lost in a world that had once felt so familiar and safe. Hours passed a day, or maybe it was only minutes. I couldn't be sure as I wandered aimlessly through the maze-like quarters, my heart pounding in my chest like a drum beat. Every shadow seemed to loom larger, every creak of the floorboards sending shivers down my spine. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find my way back to the world I knew. I was trapped in this strange and terrifying place, with no idea how to escape. As the day stretched on, my fear and desperation grew like a cancer, threatening to consume me from the inside out. I longed for the warmth and comfort of home for the reassuring embrace of my family, but they felt like distant memories, slipping further and further away with each passing moment. And so, I remain here, a lost soul in a world that no longer makes sense, clinging to the hope that someone, anyone, will come to my rescue and lead me back to the safety and security I so desperately crave. But until then, I am left to wander these dark and lonely corridors. A ghost trapped in the shadows of my own uncertainty. Kieran Richard Horman June 4th, 2010 Portland, Oregon Description Dates of birth used September 9th, 2002 Place of birth, Oregon Hair, brown Eyes, blue Height, 3 feet 8 inches at time of disappearance. Weight, 50 pounds, at time of disappearance. Sex, male. Race, white. Scars and marks. Kieran has a distinct V-shaped strawberry birthmark on his forehead. Remarks. Kieran was last seen wearing a black t-shirt with the letters CSI in green and a handprint graphic on it black cargo pants, white socks, and black sketchers. Sneakers with orange trim. He wears metal framed glasses. Details, Kieran Richard Horman has been missing from Skyline Elementary School in Portland, Oregon since June 4, 2010. He was last seen that morning after attending a science fair at the school. Am I Am still, I still here? here? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, 
leave a thumbs up, write a comment, and stay tuned for the next episode. See you soon.